Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to cover a pretty big topic and that's understanding programming languages a little better. All right, so we're just gonna cover really, really basic fundamentals and things that we should all understand about programming languages. All right, let's do it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna categorize different programming languages and we're gonna start from the bottom and go all the way to the top. The lowest, lowest level of a language are machine instructions. And these are literally ones and zeros that you're not supposed to understand. It would look like gibberish if you ever looked at it, but these are purely instructions that a computer understands. If you looked at this, it would be like one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And what that means is add these two numbers. So these type of instructions or machine level code is supposed to be interpreted by a machine, not a human, okay? So this is the lowest, lowest, lowest level of a language. Let's take it one step further and mention assembly languages. And what assembly languages really are, is just a really, really simple wrapper on top of machine code. So if you're working with an assembly level language, instead of writing one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, you can really write add, two plus three, and it'll translate it down to machine instruction. So assembly is still really, really low level. It's still really primitive, but it's still a language and it's one level above machine code. All right, so let's take our languages and move it one step higher. And we're gonna talk about system languages. How do we define exactly what a system language is? Well, a system language is anything that we use to program the actual computer system itself, which includes things like the operating system or device drivers. If you're programming the actual computer, like how the actual computer works, you usually use system languages. And one of the most common system languages are C and C++. Okay, so we're already at the last, last level, and this is the highest level of programming language categories, and these are application languages or high level languages. So this category is very, very broad. I've made it really, really general because many, many different programming languages kind of fit into this category. And these are languages that you use to build consumer facing applications usually like Excel, Flappy Bird, Twitter. Examples of these languages are usually Java, Python, or Ruby. But the major, major takeaway that I want us to understand from this point is the fundamental difference between system level languages and application or high level languages. System programming and the languages that usually tend to be used for system programming, like we mentioned C. Well, remember system programming is the act of programming the computer itself and how the computer system operates. While application level programming with application like languages, those are used to build things that we use on a day to day basis. Okay, so what we just covered is just a really, really basic categorization of languages when we started from the bottom and now we went all the way to the top. We started at machine level code that's interpreted directly by the hardware all the way up to high level applications and high level programming. Each of these categories has languages that lend themselves to that category. Like for systems programming, you usually use C or C++. For application programming, you usually use Python, Ruby, Java, etc. Okay, so we've been really, really general up to this point, and hopefully right now you're getting a small intuition about the different categories of languages, but we have to dive a little deeper and talk about a really, really, really important concept. This is the concept of compiled versus interpreted, and it's commonly misunderstood, so we're just gonna clear it up right now. With compilation, there's a very explicit step called a compilation step in which your source code gets translated to machine code. So if you wrote a program in C, usually you have to use a compiler like GCC to translate all the text you wrote into machine code that the processor can execute. The one major takeaway of compiling is that there's an explicit compilation step which translates your source code into those machine instructions. Okay, so now what exactly is interpretation or interpreters? Well, with interpreters, there's actually no explicit compilation or translation step. Interpretation is when another program 
commonly known as an interpreter, literally interprets your program, your source code, line by line and executes the right thing. The major difference, actually the only difference and most important thing you have to realize is that for interpreted, your program never goes through a compilation step. So this ultimately leads us to like one of the number one points of confusion between these two concepts and that's that either languages can be interpreted or compiled. And this is like a false notion. Remember that every single programming language actually has multiple implementations. Like if you just take Ruby, for example, Ruby is a programming language, which means kind of like it defines a nice grammar and syntax for Ruby, but actually there's many, many, many different implementations of Ruby. If you just go on Wiki and look up Ruby implementations, there'll be like, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe hundreds of implementations. This is analogous to processor land. If you guys remember that a lot, remember with processors, we define an instruction set architecture and different processors implement the same instruction set architecture. So it's very similar to how languages work in, in that analogy. Okay, so the number one takeaway here is that a language itself can't be defined as interpreted or compiled. It's the implementation of a language that's interpreted or compiled. I know this sounds a little weird, so let's just take a couple examples and hopefully it clears things up. If you're a Python software developer, the majority of cases, Python, the implementations of Python are interpreted. You'll write a lot of Python source code and then you'll usually run some Python interpreter, Python 2, Python 3, and you'll just run your program and it'll do the right thing or spit out errors at you. Well, actually, there's also implementations which compile Python code into machine code. They're less common than the interpreters, but they do exist. So you could potentially use your same Python code, the same source code that you wrote, but you would use a Python compiler, which would compile, translate all that source code into machine code. So when that happens, that implementation is actually a compiled version of Python. All right guys, so I hope that that distinction was really clear for everyone. You cannot say a language is either interpreted or compiled. It's the implementation of that language that's either interpreted or compiled. And you know, every language is really different and each one leans in different ways. Python and Ruby are usually interpreted and C and C++ are usually compiled, but it's not 100% of the time. Also, let's remember the different categorizations of languages and we started at the very bottom. Remember, all the way down at machine code or machine instructions, the system programming all the way up to application programming. All right, so we understand those basic categories and now we understand fundamentally what's the difference between interpreted and compiled. Keep the concepts of interpreted versus compiled really, really clear in your head and it's gonna make programming much easier, all right? So yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you have a better understanding and just intuition behind what a programming language really is. Um, if you like the video, just give me a like down here or drop me a comment. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of the week and I will see you next time, all right?